We're going to be going through question two of the Eastern Cape Matric RT paper uh, one, the practical paper for 2013 September exams. Um, we've done question one of the SQL. We're now going to do question two, which is the object oriented part of the question paper. So here we have question two. Remember, question two is normally divided up into two parts. The first part is the creation of the object and the fields and methods for that object. And then the second part will be a normal Delphi program which uses that object either as variables or using it in an array or something in, with regard to that. So here is our scenario. They tell us we've got an applications uh, text file and in it uh, we've got the name of some children and it says their date of birth followed by whether a deposit has been made or not for that application. Now, although we see a lot of fields here, Please remember when we create the object, we are only creating the object for one application, not for all of them. I'm assuming that when we get to the actual data or the actual question in the, the, the second part where we actually deal with the objects, uh, we'll deal with an array of these objects which will handle all of the elements in this text file. So please be aware we're only dealing with one aspect of an application, not every single, every single application that comes up here. So let's get stuck into it. Question 2.1. We must first create an object. Now, I don't like this. Hopefully, I always hope that they make an object for us, that we just have to put it in the parts that we need to. But there, we've got to create this from, from scratch. And so here we go. We need to create it, and we need to call it applications underscore UX. And then we've got to put in our student number. I'm just going to call it applications underscore U. So let's go to our code here. There is the, the Delphi code that they've given us. We're going to create a whole new unit. And I'm going to change the name of this unit. So we're going to change the name of the unit to applications. Applications underscore U. And I'm going to save this now so I don't have to do it later. Save as. And we save it in the same folder as application underscore U. So there we go. So there we go. We've got the start of our unit now. Now we must create an object as we've done already. Now in it we need to define an object called or type T school, which will obviously be derived or, or be a descendant of a normal T object. And this class must contain those fields, F name, F D O B, which I'm assuming state of birth, um, some sort of deposit, some sort of acceptance, and some sort of age. They actually don't give us much idea of what those fields must store. I know already from the text file that F name will be a string. I know that date of birth will be some sort of date, or we could probably keep it a string. Deposit was true or false, so we can actually make that a boolean. Um, I'm assuming accept will also be some sort of true or false. And I find it very weird that they've put age in here because normally you don't actually need to store the age in, in the real world. You would just need to store the date of birth because you can always work out the age if you've got the date of birth. You don't necessarily always have to store the age. But we have the age here as a variable, so we need to create that. So here we have our unit or our object that we had. We created this unit file. We're going to create an object in, in here and we're going to do it between the interface and the implementation. And we're going to start with the word type. And remember, every type must have its own end. So I'm going to write the end straight away because a lot of times we forget about that end at the of the type because it's normally we think every end must have a begin but a type also has an end so there we've got type and then we declare what our objects going to be called and we were told it's going to be t school and that's going to be of a class now we could just write it like that but we could also write t object here as well to say what it derives from. Please make sure that some people often make a mistake because they used to put in semicolons after every line. Sometimes people put a semicolon after that. Please don't because then it's going to cause hassles for your program. It'll cause a syntax error. Okay, so we've got our T class. Now, in our class, we have private and we have public methods and events and variables. Now, please remember that private means it can only be accessed from within this unit or this class. Public means it can be accessed from outside. So everything we declare over here in private will not be able to be accessed from another program, even if we use this unit in that program. Only the public methods, events, or variables we create will, will be able to be used there. So we normally create our variables here um, under the private aspect. So we, we remember we said F name was going to be a type string. And there was a FDOB, which was of was a date of birth. I'm also going to make that a string. 
Um, we can, we could make it a date and time, but I'm going to just make it a string for this case. Um, we could have an if deposit, if I remember correctly, deposit, and that was a true or false. So I'm going to make that a boolean. And then there was if accept. Now they haven't given us much detail. I probably will later. I'm going to assume that it's going to be a true or false as well. So I'll make that a boolean as well. And then if age. So that would obviously be some sort of number. Um, I'm going to assume that it's an integer. I don't know many people who go, no, I'm 5.3 years old. So we'll keep it to whole numbers. So there we've got our private fields. And I think that's all that they wanted us to do for that question. So now we move on to 2.1.2 where we have to create a constructor. Normally the second question is a constructor, so we need to create this constructor. So I'm going to create now, because the constructor must be accessed from outside of this unit as well, I'm not going to create it under the private, I'm now going to create it under public. So I want to make it a constructor, and the way you know you've spelled it correctly is you can see constructor is nice and bold there, and we normally call it create. So I'm going to call it create. Now this is where we get a bit technical. Let's have a look here. This method must accept the name, date of birth, and whether the deposit has been paid. So all the fields from the text file, and then it must initialize all the fields in the constructor. So there are three input parameters that are coming in. So there are three parameters coming in. So I, let's call it start at S name. I'm using S name and S D O B, just so I don't get confused between the F D O B and the um, S name and F name. I want to make sure that they're completely different. Now we know that S name and S D O B, those are both strings. And then the other parameter is the deposit. So I'll make it S deposit like this, and that I'll make, oh, spell it nicely. Doesn't matter, but just so I don't make a mistake later on. And that will be of type Boolean. So if I make those my parameters, there we go. I've did my declaration of my constructor, I can press Control shift c and it should create the part where I need to write the code for it. And we need to now set, we want to set these values with the values from the parameter. So I want you to set f name to whatever is in s name the parameter that has been provided. So that is the name. Now for the date of birth, we want to set the private field f DOB to what is coming in from the parameter SDOB. Always make sure that your parameters over here are the same or your variable types are the same as what you've got there. It'll make your life a lot easier. And then we've got F deposit, which must be the same as what S deposit's going to be. Make sure I spell it all nice and correct. Okay. The only other fields that we've got there is age, which I assume we'll probably calculate later. And F accept. I don't think they actually tell us anything about F accept. All fields must be initialized in the constructor. Okay, um, let's just assume for this sake, they haven't given us a lot of information to work with. Um, but let's just assume that um, you're not accepted until there's something that makes you accept it. So I'm going to make F accept. We're going to default that to false. Because one, just because you've got an entry in an application doesn't mean you're automatically accepted. We'll just set that to false. Um, the age, we can't really do now. We we'll probably find we're going to do some sort of calculation for that later because they haven't specified anything over here. So there we go. There's our constructor. It's all nice and done. Let's move on to 2.1.3. Ah, calculate age, which must calculate the current age of each applicant. Now, they're very sneaky here. They say you write a method. They don't use the word return. They don't say whether it must be a function or a procedure. It is quite tricky. There are lots of ways of doing this. Um, Technically, first of all, I wouldn't have first of all created a F age if I was working in the real world. Um, obviously, this question has asked us to do that, so we had to do it. Um, so at the very least, what I actually would do if I did that is I would then write this calculate age as a function, and then I would call it in the constructor, so for the constructor to calculate the age straight away. But I'm not going to do that. There's probably some other way that you you could write it as a procedure and call it later. Let's do it that way. So let's call a procedure. If you look at the memo, they actually use a procedure. But I would have, in the, if I was doing this in the real world, I would have created a function, and then in my constructor, I would have said f h equals to, and then I would have called that function. So yeah, we got our procedure, and our procedure must be called cal age or for calculate age, and I don't think there's any information we need because the actual date of birth is already in the object. So I'm not. I'm assuming we don't need to actually have 
the um, any parameters. So I press Control Shift C, and I get to the part where I can calculate the code for this. Now, I'm assuming that we are now going to change if age to what the age is. Now, there are lots of ways that we could do it. If it is a string, then we need to extract where the date's coming from. Now, if we look at the data from the from the text file, you can see that the year is the last four digits. So there's digit one, two, three, four, five, six, so from seven for four characters. Even the single digits, if you can see over there, the single digits are represented by two value, two numbers, zero, four. So we know it'll always be the seventh number for four, four characters. So that makes our life a little bit easier. So we can now extract, we want to extract the uh, the year from the date of birth. So for that I'm going to use the copy function. Now if I use copy I know I need a string and I know that my date of birth FDOB is a string. We're going to copy from position 7 and copy for four characters because it will always be four characters from position 7. So that's copying it. But this is returning a string. We want to do a calculation. And F age we know is already an integer. So this is a string, we can't put it in there, and this this is just giving us the year or the date of birth. We actually want to take this and convert it from a string to an int. So there we go. So now we take that answer of 2008 and we've converted from a string to int. Now that we've got that we need to work out what the actual age is. Now, we could take the current age, as I said in the memo, they just got 2013 minus the year of the birth, which, as I said, isn't uh, in the previous um, videos, you would have noticed I spoke about this with regard to the SQL state, but that's not a very good way of doing it because it will only work for this year. I would prefer to use the year function. There's a year function where you can get the year of a date, and I'm going to get the year of today or now. I can use the now function. I think it's now. We could uh, test it with today. Though. Hopefully, if we run it, it should all work. Now, there's undeclared identify these string to int and all that. It doesn't know what they are. The reason for that is because if you go to your normal Delphi program, you'll notice there's this sysutils, which is a library file of all the ways of using string to int and all that. And we use it, it automatically gets put in when we create a, um, a form, but when we've got a unit, we actually don't have it. All you can do is you can actually look at after interface, just have users. So after interface, we'll say users over here, and we'll say sysutils. I'm actually just going to copy it so I don't make a spelling mistake. Just copy it like that. And that is the library file that you need if you're going to do string to ints and all that type of calculations. Let's see if it works this time. Oh yeah, so here we've got an error. So just like we use the system utils to use the string to int, if we're using date functions, we're probably going to have to use the date utils as well. That's also a library file which lets you use all the date utilities. I think it's spot like that. So date utils if you want to use today and now. And also I think it's not here, I think it's year of. It should give me still give me an error of year. There we go. So I can say year of, which will return the year of now, which is today's date. That's how you could do if you wanted to be technically accurate. You'll see if it runs, it should work now. There we go, it does run. But according to the memo, they accepted if you just did 2013. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Okay, we're going to, in part two, we're going to start looking at the other parts of this object.